Well, hey, good Thursday, friends, and welcome to another daily devotional. Uh, I'm out here in my garage, actually, on a cool, crisp fall morning. Hasn't this fall weather just been fantastic? Hey, turn in your Bibles to uh, Matthew chapter uh, 6. We're going to start in verse 25 today and look at some of the words of Jesus. Um, uh, because what we want to talk about today is, as I mentioned before, I plan this Sunday to finish up that series, Life is Still Good. And life is still good because the future is now. I mean, not only does Jesus Christ live inside of us, so our life is on the inside. Not only is God still God, so that makes life still good. But also because the future is now. The future is not something we have to wait for. We're living out the future right now. And living in the now is a big part of, of enjoying life and appreciating the goodness of life, no matter what may be happening uh, around us. I decided to do this out in the garage because of what's standing behind me. And uh, that may be obvious to you that that's a freezer. And there's not a lot in it right now, but there's about to be a lot in it to uh, make provision for the coming winter. So we'll have all the, the food that we want and, and need for, for the winter. And I was thinking about how a freezer really is a symbol of tomorrow. I mean, nobody has a freezer unless they believe there's going to be a tomorrow. There's no reason to have a freezer if you think that today is all that there's going to be. And so I don't think there's a thing wrong with having a freezer, of course, or making provision for tomorrow. But I want to I want to point something out to you in the words of Jesus, where he talked about how his his view and the view that he calls his followers to in a very radical way uh, lives in stark contrast to that. And uh, Matthew chapter six, verse uh, 25, Jesus said, therefore, I tell you. Do not worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink, about your body, what you'll wear. Was not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? And he's talking about life. Isn't life itself more important than the food we eat or the clothes that we wear? Remember, we're talking about life, that life is still good. And, and Jesus goes on and he says, Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? And he's talking about tomorrow, worrying about tomorrow, waiting for tomorrow. And then he goes on, and why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. Well, if that is how God closed, closed the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For, your, for the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Here it is. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. <laughs> and so the Lord is just saying, don't, don't, don't live for tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. And uh, he's saying it very categorically, isn't he? Don't even worry about what you're going to eat tomorrow, which kind of lives in contrast to this freezer uh, behind me and the different ways that we as, as individuals prepare for tomorrow. Well, is Jesus really saying that we shouldn't have freezers or we shouldn't, we shouldn't have anything in the cupboard? We should just wake up uh, each day and say, uh, how are you going to feed me today, Lord? Well, in reality, that is exactly what he's saying. And he substantially modeled that in his life with his disciples, though there is a reference to the fact that they did have a treasury. And there's another reference where it says that Jesus was alone while his disciples went into town to buy food. And so, uh, you know, I think one of the ways to look at this is that Jesus had a way of saying things in an absolute and radical way. Uh, he also said, he said that we are to be perfect even as our Father in heaven is perfect. Well, I've told you many times, I have yet to have my first perfect day. That's what I get up to do. That is my goal. 
and yet, uh, you know, it just hasn't happened yet. But Jesus had a way of saying these things in such an absolute radical way to make his point. And I think the point that he's trying, that he's making more than anything else here is that don't, don't wait for tomorrow to come. Live today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Uh, don't think about tomorrow. Don't think that tomorrow is going to be the, the day. Uh, today is the day that you have. And life is still good, even in the midst of all that we have, if we understand that the future, the future is right now, that now is what we have. And, and Jesus was very, very, very clear about that. So do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. So again, friends, I just really encourage you today to uh, set out on this day or finish this day at whatever time you may be viewing this, but live your life each day uh, in the fullness of the day that is in front of you. This is what we have. And uh, let's not sit around in this pandemic waiting for things to get better. Let's just go after it. Let's just go after it. Today is what we have. And so I just want to ask you those same three questions today. You know, around this question, what are you going to do in the name of Jesus? What are you going to do in the name of Jesus today? What prayers are you going to pray in the name of Jesus? What songs are you going to sing in the name of Jesus? Today, what witness are you going to bear to the world through your words and through your acts of loving kindness toward others? How are you going to bear the gospel of Jesus Christ into your world today? Jesus said it's what we have. He'll give us everything that we need for today. And uh, we need to trust him in that and live in the fullness of today. Pray with me, Lord in heaven. This is a difficult lesson for us. We, we take so much pride in our self-reliance and our ability to store away and our ability to dress ourselves in ways we want to. And, 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 and this can be an insidious pull on us, Lord, away from this raw, wonderful, childlike dependence on you day by day by day. And so, so, Lord, reach into our hearts today and teach us this lesson in the most remarkable ways and lead us into this day with the power of your Holy Spirit working through us, the power of the Word of God hidden in our hearts, living in us, so that today we might live in its fullness and we might bring you the greatest possible glory. And we pray these things together in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, I look forward to seeing you again later this week. And uh, remember, in the meantime, live by faith, walk in wisdom. Love you guys.